really cool having you here and and taking this opportunity to capture this because i'll be honest with you when i heard you were coming to our crossfit version of our course uh i was a little bit nervous because we've known each other for years but we'd never really like talked or gotten deeper in it. and i was like i was concerned because i knew you're a pro fighter i knew you're you know on the level one team i knew you ran you had a couple of boxes and i'm like this guy is truly a subject matter expert and it's, uh, you know, I've wrestled with what I call the unconscious bias, uh, which people misunderstand, where like someone goes, I'm an expert in boxing and striking this and that, and this is bullshit. You can't learn to defend yourself in a day. This is crap. And you went to the course where we do like the athlete day, one day just the drills, and then you come back the second day and we go, if you want to teach it, this, these are the safe protocols and how to do that. And uh, I was amazed at how you took notes, how you absorbed the material, and then you coming up to me after, and then you calling me out of the blue going, I'm teaching this at my box. I got like, like athletes wanting to do this. So I just wanted to start off going like, that was, that was a nice, that was nice serendipity for me because I was apprehensive because I, I anybody who's fought more than two fights, I'll make a joke. If you've had more than two fights, you're, you're fucking into it. And if you have more than 10 fights, you've had 35 fights. Right. Yeah. So tell me about like just your, like you know why you came to the course and just briefly what your what your thoughts or experience was. Uh, uh, yeah. So it was just I met you, I think originally years ago up at Coach B's house and we kind of work out off and on together up there and then just kind of through the years you'd come into the gym um, every once in a while. And over the years every time I saw you you always had like some little like snippet of knowledge and you were always passing something on and uh, I kind of started to follow along with what you had going on followed um, social media presence stuff and at that point last spring I, or two springs ago um, it was right after I had retired from fighting and uh, kind of had taken a break from martial arts and I felt like it was a a good selfish way for me to just kind of get myself back in on a different foot kind of outside of the sports side of it and back to where I started martial arts originally uh, and then I also was with it was my fiance at the time my wife now um, and I just felt like it was something that everybody needed like everybody kind of needs that opportunity to be safer and I, from the little bit I had heard from you about the course in particular was like, hey, it's like so different. It's not like you're going to come here and learn how to be a martial artist. We're not testing for belts. We're just going to teach people how to be safer. Um, so that was one side of it. And then I was really interested to see the course and how you presented everything. Um, and that was one of the, the big takeaways was just like the, the presentation alone. Um, as a coach, as a gym owner, um, as a presenter on staff, like learning, learning that side of it was really cool. And once I got to the course and you opened up with the very first lecture, I was so excited that I was there. I was so much, so much different than I ever would have expected. And the way that everything kind of got communicated back and forth from martial arts to crossfitter to everyday person like it was just something that was so valuable that if for people to not go they're definitely missing out especially because like the the big takeaway from the whole weekend like if you went went there and learned nothing else just the fact that if you if you listen to your gut instinct you're going to be safer than if you ignore it right right that's that's the thing I was telling you, like just the cost of admission. If we can get you to, like, redefine self-defense in your mind, that's the decision to choose safety when danger is imminent, and to trust your gut based on like my decades of research. Every victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said they had a bad feeling, got a bad feeling, fucking get out of there, move. You know, um, what did you think about the uh, the the relationship where where I'd say, hey, listen, you know, the CrossFitters develop this engine stamina, endurance, and most importantly, uh, like a mental fortitude and a toughness. Like the CrossFitters, that crazy person that before work, they'll get up and go to your hero wad, take a shower and then go to work, right? That takes a certain amount of, of mental strength. And, I, and one of the things we talk about are these are all attributes you can bring, attributes you can bring to personal defense. But what I noticed over the years teaching people, and a lot of people don't realize like, you know, I've been a CrossFit, 
CrossFitter since 2006. We launched a CrossFit program in 2012. Um, and I've been teaching this stuff for decades. And so what I did is I looked at and designed a course specifically for CrossFitters. And I discovered this kind of like metaphoric connection to what I call the hidden arsenal in CrossFit. Basically, that now you as a, as a retired pro fighter, you spent years developing what people call muscle memory technique and stuff like that. And it's not really muscle memory, but that's another, that's another interview. But you develop those skill set. So I have untrained people in a course who have never even thought about hitting somebody. And I know they've got performance anxiety. They've got a scenario coming up where they've got to strike a role player or hit the equivalent of a portable heavy bag air, you know, focus pad in the, in, the, in the shape of a med ball or in some of our other courses when we have high gear, a role player. And I know they're scared shitless. They're not only like scared because they're just, it's performance anxiety, just the fear of doing something and hitting somebody, the aggression, but they're also afraid that they haven't done enough reps. So one of the connections that we made, and I want, you're honest, as a, a professional coach, as a CrossFitter, as a movement, and as a fighter, I would tell people, if you can do a push-up, you can do a palm strike, because the kinetic chain of doing that push-up is exactly the same. That if you can do a front rack, you have the range of motion to do a vertical elbow. If you can put your seatbelt on, you've got the range of motion and the neuromuscular communication to go, I'm gonna move my hand over my shoulder, behind my head, and that will drag my elbow across my center line. If there's somebody's fucking face there, right, that's gonna hit it. What we're teaching people is you already know how to move these patterns and these trajectories. What you've never thought about is applying them in the context of personal defense. And now what we're gonna work on in class is situational awareness and aggression. So that was a, 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 a big dump because we're filming. But when I do those metaphors, you look around the class, I mean, you could see everyone in the class going, oh my God, I could do a palm strike because I can do push-ups." Yeah, I mean, it's, I think that, and I think that was something that was really special about it is how, how easily like you transferred like the fact that it doesn't matter if you've ever punched somebody in your life, if you jump into them with all of your force and have your palms up, even if it's not perfect, that you're gonna get a reaction. And I, you talked a lot about creating space and creating that opportunity to get away, to get to safety. Right. Uh, and I'd actually, like I remember being there and one of my, um, the guys I started Jeet Kune Do with, um, this was before the sports side of things and I was just training martial arts for martial arts and he was talking about finger jabs one day and he's like, have you ever had an uh, eyelash in your eye? Like how much are you just sitting there like batting at it and like blinking your eye and like what the fuck, like I just want to get this thing out. Right. And he's like, it doesn't matter if you finger jab somebody perfectly, like if you swipe your finger across their eye, like you're going to get a reaction right. and that's right. all you need to get to the next step. And you transferred that so well with like the knee and the elbow and the palm strike like it didn't matter if your hands slid off them a little bit because that was the next opportunity to to get to the next spot right and, wh and what people don't realize also is in a real confrontation the bad guy isn't expecting you to fight back that's why he picked you right so if i like go and give you a while and i've got my hands in your pocket and you go fuck this and you go carry and whack and smack me with double palms there's a good chance this guy's like flinching and covering, going, what the fuck? Because he expects you to be a hopeless, helpless victim. You know, the big thing, you know, with, with the course that we've done, our Be Your Own Bodyguard course and the custom one for CrossFit, is that we're, we're looking to, again, I use the metaphor, you can take a CPR course and develop life-saving skills, but the skill of the CPR course is not nearly as in-depth as a paramedic, and a paramedic who's got legit skills is not nearly as in-depth as the emergency room doctor. And so the metaphor we're trying to give people is like, if you're just a, the general public looking for safety skills, situational awareness, uh, some verbal tactics, some simple primal gross motor movements, this is an amazing course for you. If you wanted to train for a year or two, that's your paramedic course. And if it was a lifelong pursuit, that's you becoming a doctor. We're not teaching people, you know, oh, spend a day with us and jump in the octagon. You're gonna get your ass kicked. We're not teaching people to be martial artists. Um, any thoughts on why, as a martial artist and as a pro fighter, why people have such a hard time grasping that? Um, <laughs> that's, I think like one of the things is like, because it is, it's so simple. Like what you do at the course is like the most simple thing and it like, it takes no skills like you don't need to you don't need to learn anything and people are like well if i haven't if i haven't learned there, there's no place for it everybody everybody wants something to be like really in depth and really involved like oh well, i'm gonna pay 
I'm gonna pay an extra hundred dollars because I get three pieces instead of one. Well, like if you just have that one piece and you only have to do one thing, like it's, it's gonna be much easier to actually relate. So, so you, 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 and, and it's, and it's funny because there's there's a, a couple of characters online that just continue to harp on this like well it's just this like finger splayed outside 90 like that's bullshit like and they don't realize like like the the simplicity of this air, this physiological airbag is what creates safety in people the biggest thing in the course really that i think we do is the self-awareness to situational awareness and the connection to choosing safety the moves are the least important part because if you have better uh, uh you know directive of hey i don't want to be near violence at all myself or my family like that changes everything you agree with that or uh yeah i mean it's like right like if you if you trying to not die or you're trying to not get raped or whatever like the best thing that you can do is just not end up in the situation where it might happen right, right. uh and it's like one of those things where like if like once somebody that's maybe never been told that like you just if you have a bad feeling like to just trust it and everybody kind of had like you look around i remember when you were talking about that you look around the room and everybody's going like oh yeah i'm that person where like oh, i feel like shit today i probably shouldn't work out i'm gonna go to the gym anyway and they hurt themselves or i'm gonna go i'm gonna go surf and i'm sitting in the water and i have a bad feeling and oh fuck i got eaten by a shark like right. Like, and all you have to do is like take that one choose simple safety. piece of advice and choose safety. And like, and I remember you saying like, like the worst case that scenario is like nothing was gonna happen, but you're safe anyway. Right, there's no downside to choosing safety. <laughs> Let me ask you this one last question. Um, the, you fought 35 fights, which is, which is amazing. You've been a martial artist and a, a combat sport athlete for a long time. You know, as a, with all of that, all those tools and all that experience, did the course make you safer? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, to the to the simple fact of like just like kind of like having somebody with forty years of experience, whatever, like sitting there up in front of everybody, saying like, "Look, everybody, everybody has these feelings, and the worst thing that you can do is to not trust them." Um, and I would say less along the lines of like in a violent situation but more just in like everyday life like oh you know like I have a shitty feeling about this so I'm just not going to do it today um, and just taking taking that side of it and I think one of the other things that you did and said at the course is like now that now that you know this and if you have the opportunity to teach people and you don't and something happens to them mm. and you are essentially responsible in a way that really hit home and I've been a coach and a trainer for a really long time and people have asked me since we opened the gym like oh why don't you teach martial arts here why don't you teach martial arts and I, it was always something that was separate to me it was like this is work like martial arts is my place of like it's my time right. and after you said that like I went back and forth over the like months and talked to my wife about it like uh, I really don't want to do it but fuck like tell what Tony said and I did it and I did a couple workshops off and on. I'm probably going to get ready to do some more. And What's the re response? the response that we got from all different types of clients was amazing. Like every single person from a little 15 minute talk after a weekend workout to a full hour long workshop, just introducing like the basic drills with kind of like the same general message of just choose safety. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, when are you going to do it again? When are you going to do it again? How can I learn more? Awesome. Beautiful. Buddy, thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's Tabata.